Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Happy New Year! Kumusta naman kayo? Thank you very much for joining us. Now please sign up for your attendance. The link will be flashed on screen. We will begin with the Philippine National Anthem to be followed by a short prayer. Mga kababayan, ang pambansang awit ng Pilipinas. Ayang magiliw, kaya sa sinahanan, alam ng puso sa dikit mo'y buhay. Upang pinilang, kaya ka ng magiging sa manutupin.
Let us bow our head and put ourselves into the holiness of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. To the esteemed educators and everyone tuning in with us on Facebook, welcome to the webinar on amplifying developments of assessments and performance skills using the Math Plus resources. I am Dr. Jumela F. Sarmiento, and I will be your moderator for today. Anytime during our uh, presentations, we invite you to, uh, to comment your questions Okay, or say anything about the presentation through the comment section on our Facebook Live stream. No? Now, to formally welcome us to this webinar, uh, we have Dr. Aline G. Mendoza, the Chief Education Supervisor, Curriculum Implementation Division of SDO Mandaluyong City. Let us all welcome Dr. Mendoza. Good morning, ma'am. Hello, good morning. I have my problem sa technology ko. Wait. I, narinig po ba ako? Yes, we can hear you. Yes. yes Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. A nice day to everyone. This is a Saturday. Yes, we are here together with the ang ating mga benefactor from the Ateneo University or Ateneo de Manila University. Thank you so much for sparing time for all of us here in Mandaluyong and nationwide, I think. But before that, I would like to acknowledge mo ng ating SDO Mandaluyong officials headed by our uh, SDS, Ma'am Romela M. Cruz, our ESDS, Dr. Aurelio Alfonso, and our uh, SGOD Chief, uh, Ma'am Emma Arubio, and of course, ang ating... Uh, education program supervisor who, who have who made this possible. This spearheaded the the collaboration with the uh, Ateneo de Manila, Mr. Resti, Restituto Rodelas. And yes, my special mention, acknowledgement, and greetings and appreciation naren sa sabay ko na sa ating benefactor today, our uh, professors from Ateneo de Manila University, the power team, there, um, nakaka overwhelm, uh, Dr. Humela Sarmiento, Dr. Luis Antoinette de la Pena, Pena Penas, Dr. I have my copy here, wait, Dr. Uh, Debbie Marie Bautista Versosa, Dr. Maria Alba Aberin, and Dr. Uh, Anto, Anthony Tolentino. Sir and moms, talagang, thank you very much for your uh, your generosity, academic generosity to our teachers in Mandaluyong and understand and I share po itong link sa lahat ng mga, mga teachers uh, nationwide. So, so happy to be part of your uh, uh, parang sharing of your, your expertise here. So heartwarming, very inspiring. Thank you so much. Of course, to our 
teachers in Mandaluyong, especially mentioned ko na, lang, na rin din, for having this time for from your family time na you have for this at least two hours uh, to help or to, to be able to learn a new um, innovation. Ito yung mga research-based innovation application in mathematics focus on the assessment. So very timely ang ating topic ngayon. So thank you so much for having you in this webinar. And yes, we would like to welcome everyone. So again, Sir Resti, thank you very much for, for having this uh, webinar for our teachers. This is very timely because we are now having our uh, implementation of distance learning um, modality delivered to our learners. Yet, uh, one of the challenges that we encounter, how we are we encountered, how we are able to assess the learning that we have, kumbaga, bago po natin implement, lalo sa public school. So, very timely that we have all these people so generous and their um, and their skills and talent to share to us na para maging uh, effective yung ating assessment, especially in the performance and written task of our learners. So, webinar amplifying. Nakakatuwa, nakaka, kumbaga, pinapalawak natin, ano, how to have this assessment development and performance task skills using math plus resources. Take it uh, with different apps, uh, technology-based siya, because basically, ito po yung ating aim sa DepEd natin. DepEd Order 31, ang sabi po dito is that we really have to look for some options, uh, alternative to be able to be able to to implement some kind of um, assessment, a kind of adaptable assessment uh, processes or yung application like this for for the learners to have this meaningful support para sa kanilang development and to respond to the, the different context in this pandemic time natin na implementation ng learning sa ating mga bata. So, but then beca because of the situation, though we really would like to have this meaningful support, uh, having this different assessment, probably tool application, but let's not, let's be reminded also that in the kind of uh, parang yung, yung ating passion to help our learners for some kind of ito mga new techno application technology probably, but let's be reminded that we also have this academic ease na kumbaga lahat po ito ay gagawin natin na may, may gentle reminder that we, we would like not to create something like undue pressure also to our learners, sa ating mga teachers, sa ating mga parents or families para hindi po sila mahirapan sa pag implement ng assessment processes na to. But then I know, alam ko kasi this is research-based, uh, we're so positive that this could help them is actually yung purpose natin. So again, thank you very much for having this uh, kind of webinar to our benefactor, the Ateneo de Manila University. Thank you. And to our, our, our teachers, our dear teachers who have been um, having very positive pagdating sa mga webinars like this. Thank you for your time. And God bless everyone. Good luck. Thank you very much, Dr. Aline Mendoza. Tama naman yung sinabi niya, no? Let's not be pressured. So let's just enjoy this uh, new mode of teaching and learning. I will now give a short introduction on the MatPlus apps. Uh, and I will also introduce the project team. So as I said earlier, anytime during the presentation, not just my presentation, but the next presentations, uh, please feel free to comment your questions. We have a Q&A portion at the end of the webinar. Also, don't forget to sign up for your attendance so the, the link is flashed on screen. So let me now share my presentation. So amplifying development of assessment and performance task skills using 
the Math Plus resources. This webinar is made possible through our project entitled Technology Innovations for Mathematical Reasoning, Statistical Thinking, and Assessment by the Math Plus team, funded by the Department of Science and Technology, Philippine Council for Industry, Energy and Emerging Technology Research and Development, or DOST featured, and implemented by Ateneo de Manila University in coordination with the University of Southern Mindanao. We are grateful to the Depth Ed Schools Division of Mandaluyong City, together with SDO Marikina, SDO Quezon City, SDO Paranaque City, for co-organizing this webinar. Shout out to our teacher from teachers from these schools. Now allow me to introduce the members of our current team who make up the project. So first we have our project leader, Dr. Maria Luis Antonette de las Peña. She's a professor of mathematics in the Ateneo Mathematics Department and is also currently the Associate Dean of Research and Creative Work in the Ateneo Loyola Schools. She's column editor of the Math Tourist for the journal Mathematical Intelligencer. Next, we have Dr. Maria Alba Q. Aberin, who is an assistant professor of the Ateneo Mathematics Department. She's a board member of the Philippine Council of Mathematics, Teachers Educators Incorporated. With her is uh, Mr. Len Patrick Dominic M. Garces, currently a PhD math candidate of University of South Australia and former lecturer of the Ateneo Mathematics and Economics Department. We also have uh, Dr. Mark Loyola, Assistant Professor of the Math Department of Ateneo de Manila University. And then yours truly, Jumela Sarmiento, I'm an associate professor also of the math department, Ateneo de Manila University. I was a former president of the Mathematical Society of the Philippines. Following me is Dr. Mark Anthony C. Tolentino, currently associate chair of the mathematics department. He's also an assistant professor of the mathematics department of Ateneo. Next is Dr. Debbie Marie Versosa, a former member of the Ateneo Math Department, currently Associate Professor of the University of Southern Mindanao. She's also a board member of the Philippine Council of Mathematics Teachers and Educators, Incorporated. Then lastly, we have our project staff, Earl John Sinahon, an undergrad student, a BS Mathematics student of Ateneo de Manila. University. You can find us on Facebook. We also have a, a website, mathplusresources.wordpress.com. This will be flashed on screen many times during the presentation. We also have a YouTube channel. So we invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel for our videos. And you can also reach us through our email address, matplus.admu at gmail.com. Now, without further ado, let us hear from our project team leader, Dr. Maria Luis Antonette de las Peñas, to give us an introduction on assessment and performance tasks using the MATPLUS app. Please join me in welcoming Dr. de las Peñas. Hello, good morning, Dr. Good morning. Sarmiento, and good morning to all our listeners today, all the teachers uh, from Mandaluyong, as well as uh, the different uh, divisions joining us this morning. So first, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank uh, Dr. Romela, Dr. Aline, as well as Mr. Resti, they have uh, been our partners uh, in this journey uh, starting last year. And we are thankful for this opportunity as well uh, for sharing today 
uh, this webinar. So uh, let me uh, just uh, bring my presentation to the screen. So today, as uh, explained and mentioned earlier uh, by Dr. Sarmento, this webinar uh, entitled Amplifying Development of Assessment and Performance Task Skills with Math Plus Resources is being brought to you through our project under uh, DOSTP Shared. Uh, we recognize that nowadays uh, we have we face many challenges as educators, as teachers, uh, especially during this new normal, where we are uh, fully online in terms of uh, teaching our students uh, mathematics. And one of the challenges is uh, how to create uh, assessment and performance tasks. So our webinar today, uh, we are going to present some strategies uh, on how to create uh, these uh, tasks and assessment with the help of technology. Technology actually, um, and especially the use of innovative digital tools are very helpful as we create uh, these tasks. So the impact of technology uh, through the years has been well studied and a lot of uh, research has been done on the benefits of this technology. And indeed, even in the creation of performance tasks, uh, these come uh, very helpful. Uh, actually, especially in the whole concept of what we call edutainment, where we uh, not only uh, engage students in a fun activity, but at the same time develop developing their critical thinking skills as well as their problem solving skills. So particularly there is the use of tools, say in a game like environment, this will be shared today, where uh, mathematical concepts are mastered through uh, the use of the tools uh, continuously as well as developing the mathematical skills. There are also several other benefits of technology uh, which we can use and capitalize on as we develop these performance tasks. For instance, there's the visualization, a good grasp uh, through structural thinking of the mathematical concepts, developing um, a sound number sense, as well as estimation skills. To add to this, uh, the extent of how we explore the different mathematical concepts can be done easily through technology. Uh, the apps that we have created uh, uh, present a lot of interactivity and instant feedback so that students can explore more the mathematical concepts. And uh, somehow, in a certain sense, assessment can be done uh, properly and uh, in a systematic way. Uh, you will see early uh, later today as well how we use technology to access real data, to create mathematical models, and uh, as well as strengthening computational capabilities. So hopefully with this webinar today, uh, all of you teachers can be uh, guided more, but I'm sure, I'm sure ang gagaling nyo, you can create uh, more materials uh, we will give some ideas, and uh, as you will uh, see through the presentations today, uh, some of the aspects of these performance and assessment tasks are based on this, you know, goal, role, audience, situation, product, and standards. But you will see the extent, uh, the different strategies that we are presenting today, and hopefully uh, this will serve you know, a, a little help uh, for you to create uh, more uh, material. So with this, uh, we hope that you enjoy uh, these uh, two hours uh, that we are bringing uh, to you today. Uh, and uh, without further ado, I will uh, introduce and present to you 
Dr. Debbie Marie Versosa. She will be starting off with uh, presenting assessment strategies for grades one to six. So what we have done here is to uh, present first some concepts from grades one to six, then uh, grade seven to 10, and as well as some uh, strategy for statistics. So good day and uh, I'll see you again later. Uh, good morning, everyone. So um, I will present to you six of the apps that we have for grades one to six. There are actually more, but um, we, for the time being, because of the time constraints, I'll only show six. So medyo dahil six sik yung video, um, I would urge you, hopefully you have a piece of paper and your ball pen. So maybe you can jot down some notes na pwede yung balikan later on. So I hope you um, learn more because... Um, I'm already giving you, ano, parang, ano, foreshadowing na medyo siksik yung next video. So I do hope you you focus and you yung talagang tingin kayo sa screen. So yun lang po and um, please see our assessment strategies for grades 1 to 6 using the Math Plus apps. Thank you. This video is about assessment strategies using the Math Plus apps for grades 1 to 6. Before we begin, let me just um, remind you, you can download or replay this video to revisit some parts. Kasi medyo siksik na siksik itong video na ito. Marami tayong apps na i-discuss. And in order to do that, medyo mabilisan. So kung may gusto kayong balikan, balikan nyo lang. And um, this is the website. So again, kung hindi nyo nakopya, okay lang. You can always come back to it. But in any case, it is https, okay, colon, double slash, mathplusresources.wordpress.com. Okay, now, so let's proceed. The apps that you will download will be free, game-like, can be played offline, and aligned with the DepEd competencies. So the thing is, let the children play. Sabihin nyo lang sa kanila, oh, ito yung app, download nyo, laruin niyo okay, they can play for like 15 minutes per day, okay, and then the thing is the feedback from the app, syempre yung app sabihin niya tama or mali, the feedback can help children improve and learn from mistakes. So in this way, you can use the apps for formative assessment. The children learn by playing the apps. So um, share nyo lang sa kanila yung mga link. Pero siyempre, bago nyo i-share, dapat may idea kayo kung ano yung mga yon So, yun yung reason na meron tayong itong video. Okay, so, for summative assessment naman or performance tasks, um, iba naman yung um, objective nito. Kung formative assessment is more about learning, summative assessment is more about testing, did they learn something? So, it's application of knowledge, not limited to a single answer, Demonstrate learning through transfer to new situations. These things here I got from the official DepEd memo on performance tasks. So, subukan ko rin na yung pag-discuss na apps, ganito rin yung ating tatahakin. So, um, some sample summative assessment tools that qualify as performance tasks as per the same DepEd memo show, pwede tayong gumawa ng assessment that require reasoning and proof. Manipulatives to show math concepts or solve problems uh, or use measuring tools and devices. And in this way, the Math Plus apps can be very appropriate because you have here additional representations or manipulatives to show math concepts. So to summarize, the lowest classing assessment, formative and summative. Dun sa formative, you just ask the children to play, you just ask them to explore. But for summative assessment, after they play, oh, ito na, ah, they will apply their knowledge and will also try to make tasks that elicit multiple responses or multiple strategies. So makita niyo yan mamaya. So the first apps that I will show you are frame, grade, frame game and grid game. So this is the frame game app. So, you have here a target number, current number. So, ang gagawin ng bata ay i-repress niya itong mga button para umabot dito sa target number. So, para lang makita nyo, 
kada press meron din corresponding na feedback dito sa kanan. So, makita niya ano yung effect when you add 10. When you add 10, o nadadagdagan ng isang 10 frames. So, 57 and so on. But if our target is 52, then we now have to subtract 1. Ayan. So, this is the frame gain. Kung isipin ninyo, um, pang grade 1 lang ito, no, it's not. Because we also have um, additional representations like money. So, kunwari, ang target ay 7. Anong gagawin natin? Ganyan. So, pwede nyo paglaruan. Okay? And then, we also have larger numbers. So, pwedeng digits para lang makita nyo, hindi lang siya 1 to 100. Pang hanggang grade 4, grade 5, kunwari, 1 to 100,000. Maniwala kayo kahit teachers, medyo mapapaisip kayo. Kaya maganda itong app na to because it seems simple. But if you look at it, kahit kung pagdating dito sa larger numbers, it will be more challenging. So, I urge you to try this app. How will you reach 90,000? So, mag-add tayo 10,000 and so on. Hanggang umabot dito. There is also the more advanced level. The... Dito naman sa more advanced level, meron ng moves left. So, hindi pwedeng manghula lang tayo or gumamit tayo ng non-efficient solution na mag plus 10 ka lang kasi uubos yan. So, we have to think of the shortest solution. So, for example, balik tayo dito. If we only have 5 moves to get from 96 to 57, you have to think carefully. Two digits pa lang yan. So, mas mahirap yan pagdating dun sa larger number of digits. So, for example, we do this. Minus 10, minus 10, minus 10, 66. Okay, we only have two moves. So, pwede tayo mag minus 10 and then plus 1. So, this is the feedback that I was saying. We also have the grid game. So, basically, the same idea. You have a target number. Ngayon, nandito tayo sa 7. So, we add and so on. So, same with uh, earlier, you also have an option na merong moves left. And then, we also have options for larger numbers. Ayan siya. We also have options for decimals. Okay? So, mga grade 4, grade 5, you can use this. Ayan, ganyan. And for integers. So, integers, let's say, meron tayong warm-up ganyan. Ito, may moves left. How do you reach 30 from here? Okay? You also have an option for um, full numbers na hanggang 1,000. Yung mga ganyan. So, you'll notice I'm not playing the app as a whole. Kailangan kayo yung mag-explore. At least nakita nyo ano yung nagagawa niya. Believe me, um, especially for larger numbers, it becomes more challenging also. So, it develops higher order thinking skills. And you can see that it also appropriate for grade 1, kunwari whole numbers, up to grade 5, grade 6, kasi nandun pa yung integers, and decimals. So a very brief run-through of the MELCs, just to prove uh, the point earlier. So the apps actually um, target all of these MELCs in grades 1 and onwards about visualizing addition. You also have for grade 2. Okay, hindi ko nababasahin isa-isa. So as I said, you can download or replay the video later on. For grade 3, for larger numbers, di ba? So, laruin nyo yung app, makita ninyo, meron din yun pang larger numbers. Okay, you also have grade 4 or even larger numbers. Grade 5. Okay, and yan. Grade 6, may integers. So, the question is, how do you make summative tasks based on that? So, pwede kasing ganito ang gagawin nyo. Meron kayong moves left. Okay, kayo na yung magbigay ng moves left. Gumawa ng sarili nyong puzzle. So, yung mga bata ang gagawa ng tanong. Sa anong starting number at target number, pwedeng mangyari na moves left equals 9. Siguro yung ibang bata mas stuck. So, it's better also if you give an example. So, katulad nito, moves left is 9. Pwede kasing mag-start sa 25. Tapos yung target ay 88. You can check that if the start is 25, the target is 88, you really need 9 moves. So, yung mga bata, mag-isip din sila ng sarili nila. So, you can see how this can qualify as a performance task. It elicits different strategies. And siguro yung iniisip ninyo, paano yan, nagkukopyahan yung mga bata. This one, they, there are so many possible answers. Medyo mahirap to kasi moves 9, moves def equals 9. Kung gusto nyo mas madali, pwedeng moves def equals 3 lang or 4, ganon. Tapos for higher grade levels, you can also specify kung anong klaseng number ang gusto nyo. Gusto nyo ba decimal or integer? Ang mahalaga magbigay tayo ng example para hindi sila mas-stuck. 
Another app is multiplication. So dito, um, I suggest you download the app, play it. You'll see na may mga games related to skip counting. There are also games related to jumping on a number line. So makita nyo talaga yung palaka na tumatalon-talon. And um, you can use this for several competencies from grade 2. May multiplication na sila. Visualizes multiplication. Grade 2. Okay. Um, actually, hindi lang sa grade 2 hanggang grade... Sorry, this is grade 3. So multiplication, the basic facts for multi multiplication are learned in grades 2 and 3. And you can see that the representations are many and the multiplication app actually targets all of these equal quantities, arrays, counting by multiples, and equal jumps on the number line. So yun yung app, paglaruan nyo po sana. Pero paano kayo gagawa ng performance task? Pwedeng ganito, kumuhit ng larawan na nagpapakita ng 7 times 6. So if they play with the app, they can draw something like this na equal groups. Or ipakita ang 7 times 6 sa number line. So siguro pag nakita nila yung mga palaka, alam na nila how to draw 7 times 6 on the number line. The next app is ordering game. And then para medyo mas mapabilis, ang gagawin ko, I will not show you all the MELCs anymore. Um, instead, I will proceed to the app kaagad and then I will give you some sample summative tasks. Okay? The ordering game can be used to address any of the competencies that relate to arranging numbers or ordering numbers. So makita nyo yan from grades 1 to 6. So this is how the ordering game goes. Okay? Some random numbers are generated. Tapos kailangan gawin natin silang in order from smallest to largest. So kung ilagay mo dyan, sasabihin niya, incorrect. So halimbawa, 66, ganyan. So the goal is to complete this line within the number of chances left. So, para lang makita ninyo, so, gagawin natin ganito. Yan. Pagdating ng medyo marami nang nakalagay, humihirap siya. Kasi dapat, eksakto, so yung 45, wala na tayo. Papaglagan yung 54, wala. So, we have to pass, rule again. Okay, 63, hindi na pwede. Pero 36, pwede pa. So, isipin nyo saan kaya pwede. Diyan. Okay, 53, hindi pwede. 35, yan. So, ito yung magiging challenge ngayon. You only have 11 chances left. Sana may lumabas na number na pwede dito sa dalawang ito. So ngayon wala. Okay, 25 wala. So ito yung nagpapa-excite sa game. You can also have a more challenging level na fewer chances left. O pwede 44, ganon. 11 wala and so on. So ito may konting excitement, ma-build up, di ba? So paano, anong kailangan natin dito ng il ilagay? So, in this case, okay, we won with two, two chances left. So, there are several options here. Pwedeng larger numbers, again, para sa mga grades 5 and onward. So, mga ganyan, para lang alam nyo. And then, we also have fractions. Alright, fractions. Ang maganda sa fractions, makita nyo pa yung drawing niya dito. So, we have two halves and so on. And then, there are also integers. So, just so you can see, you, ha you can have a negative number. Ayan. So, some sa sample summative tasks that you can do are the following. O, magsulat ng whole number na pwede ilagay sapat lang. O, kaya, kung fractions ang topic nyo, magsulat ng fractions na pwede ilagay sapat lang. Or, magsulat ng integer na pwedeng ilagay sa mga pat lang. We also have the matching game. Itong matching game na to napakarami yung pwedeng gawin dito. Like, for example, um, may whole numbers, match number with picture. So, simple lang. Ayan. O, six and six. Pero meron din kasing target sum with pictures. What do I mean? So, may target sum kayo na 10. Ano yung pwedeng bumuo ng 10? Halimbawa, ito, 8, tsaka 2, 3, and 7, and so on. May feedback din kung mali. Ayan. Okay, pwede rin kasing wala ng picture, so mas abstract na, numbers na lang. O, target natin ay 10, 7, and 3, and so on. Okay, we also have fractions. Okay, pwede yung 1 half and 1 fourth lang. O, subukan natin tong denominator is 2, 3, 4, 6. So, we will match a fraction with each picture, 3 fourths, and so on. Okay, pwede rin kasing target sum sa fractions. So, you can have a target sum of 1. 
So, kung one, ano yung ipaparis natin para makabuo ng one whole? So, pwedeng ito, tsaka yan, one whole. O, oh, this is five, six. Anong ipaparis natin sa five, six? Ayan siya. So, ganon. And then, there are also decimals. They match number with picture. Okay, ito kasi minsan hindi na-emphasize sa klase. So, we have 0.51 and so on. Okay. And we can have um, target sum also if we want a target sum of 1. So, we can do that as well. And then, there is also the option kung gusto nyo may hundreds place. Ayan, para lang makita ninyo. So, may mga hundreds place. So, as I said, um, I cannot go through all the apps, all the features. So, please explore. At least, alam ninyo, may decimals, may fractions, may whole numbers. Merong target sum, tapos meron din matching with pictures. So, how do we make sample summative tasks out of those? So, pwedeng ganito. Gumuhit ng bilog para magpakita ng 8. Kasi kung naglaro na sila ng app, alam na nila paano ito gawin. Or gumuhit ng 2 fifths. Diba? Ito yung mga nakita nila sa app. Or gumuhit ng... 0.83 or 83 hundredths. Or if they played the target game, pwedeng ganito, magbigay ng dalawang whole number na ang total ay 10. Iguhit sila. Magbigay ng dalawang similar fractions na ang total ay 1. Iguhit sila. Kung gusto nyo mas may challenge, dissimilar fractions na ang total ay 1. Iguhit sila. Pwede rin magbigay ng dalawang decimals na ang total ay 1. Another app is the Catch the Carrot app. So, basically, meron kayong number line. Tapos, iisipin ng bata kung saan sa number line ang 2. Kunwari, this is 0, this is 10. Asan ang 2? Pag tama ang sagot ng bata, yun na yung pinaka-feedback. Masasalo ba ng basket ang carrot? So, for example, meron tayo dito, 310. From 0 to 1,000. We will estimate saan kaya dito yung 310. Okay. Tapos, the feedback again will tell you kung um, tama ang ating estimate. So, kung nasa law ang carrot, then we are correct. So, this app will address any competency related to estimation or number lines. And how do we make summative tasks out of this? So, uh, by the way, meron tayong larger numbers. We have fractions. We also have decimals. So, please explore the app. Grade 1 man kayo o grade 6, meron tayong topic para sa inyo. Okay, so sample summative task, maglagay ng tatlong whole number. Bahala na yung bata kung gusto niya maglagay ng 50 or 90 sa kanyang tamang pwesto. Or pwede rin fractions, isulat ang mga fractions. So after they play with the app, the learners will probably be able to answer this. Or yan, isulat ang fraction, medyo mas mahirap to dahil instead na 0 to 1 kanina, ito 0 to 2. So nasa inyo na yan bilang guro. What kinds of tasks you can give? Yan. Pwede ring decimal. Isulat ang decimal. Or for grade 6, isulat ang integer. Another app I will show you will be the target number game. This is for any competency that involves mental computation, mental addition. Marami yan from grades 1 to 6. So, for example, in this problem here, you have to make the greatest sum. So, pinakamalaking sagot. So, kung ilagay natin, uh, pag gusto natin malaki, syempre yung mga malalaking digit talagay natin dito, we can check. Tama na ba? O, oh, kaya ito may feedback. Try again, there's a better result. So, we can swap these numbers and then congratulations. You can um, check, there are many other options. Least difference, medyo challenging ito. I suggest explore this. This is another exciting task that you can give your learners. And of course, to make the app more applicable for many more grade levels, meron din tayong integers na option tulad dito. So as mentioned um, in, at the start, we just ask the children to play with the apps. And then afterwards, ito na yung summative task. So kung naglaro na sila ng target app, o oh, ito na, sa sample summative task, use the following large numbers to make the largest sum. So kung integers gusto nyo, oh, so palitan nyo lang ng format ito. So to summarize, I showed you several apps for formative assessment. Let's just make them, make the children play, make them enjoy, make them learn. And then for summative tests, we apply, we ask them to apply what they learned in the app so that they can um, solve problems, elicit strategies. In fact, there are some performance tasks that they, the children are asked to create. 
Kung napansin nyo sa DepEd, mula grade 1 to 6, marami doon competencies creating problems. So, itong app na ito, magagamit nyo dyan. Kung naalala ninyo, meron akong binigay example kanina, ito yung sample task. Children will create their own answers sa Bloom's Text Taxonomy, ito yung highest, di ba, creating. So, maraming ganito sa DepEd competency na baka nga minsan hindi na natin nagagawa. But the apps will really um, give you an opportunity to include creating in the performance tasks. And then, finally, some tips. Make the task doable. I know that in the blended learning environment, ito yung nagiging challenge na nanay daw gumagawa or ate, kuya, tatay, ganyan. Paano yun? So, let's make the task doable para yung bata mismo, siya na yung gagawa. They will want to do it themselves. So, write in conversational language. Dito nga, ginamit ko Tagalog. So, you can use whatever you think will make the task more doable to the children. And also, kung, napansin, kung naisip nyo baka mas stuck sila, you can give some sample answers. Katulad dito, di ba, nagbigay ako ng sample para in a way na nabibigyan sila ng way to move forward so that they don't become stuck. So thank you for your attention. And I hope you download these apps from our website. Uh, good morning. I hope that you learned um, about the Math Plus apps and that uh, I hope it gives you ideas on how to integrate them and to make performance tasks out of them. The bottom line is explore the app so that kayo mismo gusto nyo palaroin yung mga bata. For the next part, um, we will, um, we have an, more apps for grades 1 to 6, so I'll turn you over to um, Dr. Jumela Sarmiento, who will talk about divisibility and factors. Thank you very much, Dr. Versosa. So I hope you learned a lot from uh, her presentation. So in the next presentation, uh, this is for uh, grades 4 to 5 and maybe grade 6 also. So I will uh, demonstrate two, two apps, but I will also uh, show you some sample activities and tasks no? related to divisibility and factors. I hope you will enjoy. Hello, teachers. In this presentation, we discuss teaching and assessment strategies for divisibility. Divisibility is a skill used in many different concepts throughout the year, and it's really helpful to promote number sense in our students. Factors and divisibility are important concepts for the Department of Education. You can see here in grade four, quarter two, in the list of the most essential learning competencies, there is identifies factors of a given number up to 100, also identifies the multiples of a given number up to 100, and differentiate primes from composite numbers. Same is true for grade five, quarter one. It is important that students use divisibility rules for two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten, 10, and 11 to find common factors. Students are also expected to solve routine and non-routine problems involving factors, multiples, and divisibility rules. They're also expected to find common factors and the greatest common factor of two to four numbers using continuous division. The divisibility rules will hopefully help students to be uh, less dependent on calculator and to be able to, to solve problems very quickly. So uh, the divisibility rule for number two is that uh, a number is divisible by 2 when the unit's digit is 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8. A number is divisible by 3 when the sum of its digit is divisible by 3. Divisible by 5 if the unit's digit is 0 or 5. It's divisible by 6 when it is divisible by 2, also divisible by 3. And the number is divisible by 9 when the sum of its digit is divisible by 9. Other divisibility rules are a number is divisible by 4 
when the number formed by the last two digits is divisible by four. For eight, a number is divisible by eight when the number formed by the last three digit is divisible by eight. On the other hand, a number is divisible by 11 when the alternate sum and difference of the digit is divisible by 11. And then you also have the visibility test for 13. So we expect our students to know these divisibility rules, no? We have created some games that our students can play to make learning divisibility and factors more exciting. They can choose which rules they want to practice and then either play for mastery or speed or just for practice. In the divisibility game, players can choose the divisor for example, three, six, and nine, and the number of items, for example, nine items. Now, children select numbers that are divisible by the divisor. For example, click on all numbers divisible by three, by six, by nine, and also numbers that are divisible by both six and nine. It turns out that among the nine numbers listed here, only 882 and 306 are divisible by six and also by nine. We expect our students to make use of the divisibility test to be able to, to play the game. Because we missed one item, our score is just 35 instead of the highest score, which is 36. The app will help children practice using the divisibility test. For an added challenge, uh, players may also play with four digit numbers and other divisors too. For example, two, four, or eight. So click on all numbers divisible by four. And these are the numbers 5,792, 2,720, 4,760, and 4,832. Using the divisibility test by four, the last two digits must be divisible by four. For an added challenge, players may also play with more numbers. So instead of playing with nine, or 12, players may also choose to play with 16 numbers. So here we wanted to uh, click on all numbers divisible by eight. Another game is the factors game. This app would help children remember factors of a number. So we select a number, then click enter. For example, if we choose 12, then we click all the factors of 12. Now, because we missed the number two, you have two added to the missed points. If you choose 18, then we select all proper factors of 18. For example, you choose nine, and you choose 15, because 15 is not a factor of 18, 15 has been added in the missed point. So children must strategize to reach a high score. For an added challenge, play with numbers mix up and with time limit too. So players may also choose to play within one minute, within two minutes, or the players may also play with unlimited time. For an added challenge, players may also choose to play with more numbers, like numbers from 1 to 50. So we select all of its factors, then click Enter. As formative assessment, 
you can just let your students play and have fun with the games. Since it's difficult to require them to send you a screenshot of their games, just ask them to record the levels they have played. They may record the levels they played and the scores in a table each day. Summative assessments and performance tasks are given at the end of a lesson or a quarter. The students must be able to show application of knowledge. This, the task should not be limited to a single correct answer. And the task should demonstrate learning to transfer to new situation. Here I will give you some suggestions of activities and tasks for students. Sample activities and tasks are as follows. For example, one, we shade all boxes with numbers divisible by three. So we use the divisibility test for three. That should be the sum of the digit must be divisible by three. So some of these numbers are 18, 27, and 30, but there are still other numbers. So like 42, 24, 36, and 75. Okay, and then let a student shade all numbers divisible by three. As you can see, we can form a letter A. A sample task that can be given for a longer period of time is for students to create a puzzle by filling up the grid with two digit numbers so that the numbers in the shaded squares are divisible by six and the numbers in all other squares are not, no? So we just uh, have to remind our students that uh, they make sure that the numbers are arranged randomly. Another variation to this task would be uh, numbers in the shaded squares are divisible by three, four, five, or seven. Another task is to ask your student to create a puzzle by designing their own image. For example, they draw an arrow, an animal, or any object so that uh, when players shade the correct squares with numbers divisible by, for example, six, they will end up with the image. And then another variation would be numbers in the shaded squares are divisible by either three, four, five, or seven. Variation to the sample tasks are as follows. Learners may increase the size of the grid. It could be eight by eight, nine by nine, 10 by 10, or larger. You may also uh, allow them to use a mixture of one or two digit numbers, or even three digit numbers. Repetition of numbers may be allowed especially for bigger grids, no? A teacher may impose a theme for the images, such as, for example, you require them to use only animals or letters of the alphabet. And then uh, another uh, suggestion is to require the students to come up with three or more grids, okay? And then you can uh, ask them, okay, that these grids must follow a story or a situation. At the end of the test, uh, you may ask your students to reflect on the task, no? How did you choose the numbers to be placed on the grids? When choosing numbers that are divisible by six, okay, how did you choose the numbers? What are the difficulties encountered when choosing the numbers? Explain. What did you learn from the task? Another sample activity is fill in the blanks. Fill in the blank so that the four digit number is divisible by nine. So a solution to the given 
uh, problems are as follows. However, for the third problem, there may be other solution. The hundreds digit may also be a nine because three plus nine is 12 plus seven is 19 plus eight is 27. So the sum of the digit is divisible by nine. So you can easily check that 3,878 is also divisible by nine. The last problem also has another solution. The entry in the tens digit can also be a zero because one plus three plus five is equal to nine, a number divisible by nine. And one can easily check that 1,305 is divisible by nine. Another sample task would be uh, some more difficult problems such as problems that appear in competition. So one example would be a number in the 2020 MMC elimination round, the four digit number two blank, nine blank is divisible by both nine and four. What are the possible values of the missing digits? Another problem which appeared in the 2019 national finals of MMC oral competition, if the nine digit number blank, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven blank is divisible by 45, determine all possible values of A and B. Based on this example, we have the following sample task. No? So one would be given that you've learned about divisibility, find digits A and B in the number below so that the following conditions are true. We require our students to show all of their work. The requirement is for the six digit number to be divisible by eight, divisible by nine, and digit A cannot be the same as digit B. We wanted our students to explain the steps followed to solve the problem. Another sample task would be, how many ways are there to arrange four threes and two fives into a six digit number divisible by 11? We expect our students to use the divisibility test by 11. We wanted our students to explain the steps they followed to solve the problem. Another sample task, how many four digit numbers can be formed using four numbers from the numbers 0, 1, 2, 5, and 9 with no repetition, such that the number form is divisible by six and then require the students to explain the steps they followed to solve the problem. So these are just some sample tasks no, related to the visibility and looking for factors of a number. Sample rubric for this task would be, you give a student a one point when uh, they fail to answer the problem correctly. We give a student three points if they were able to answer the problem correctly and they were able to describe some steps and show awareness of the importance of divisibility rules. However, it is unclear how the rules are applied. You give the student the perfect score when the answer to the problem is correct and the student uses the visibility test to solve the problem. Moreover, the students were able to clearly and completely describe all the steps, including the use of the divisibility rules. So this is just a sample rubric for the task I just mentioned. So these are just sample uh, activities and assessment tasks. Of course, you may have other ideas. So to know more about our apps, check us out at the matplusresources.wordpress.com. We also have a Facebook page. We also have a YouTube. So we invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. 
and you can send us an email through the following email address. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for uh, listening. Our next uh, presentations are for high school teachers. So we would like to welcome back Dr. Maria Luis Antoinette de las Peñas for a presentation on performance tasks in geometry using MATPLAS apps. Uh, good, good morning once again, Dr. Sarmiento, and good morning again to all the teachers. So at this part of our webinar, I'll be presenting uh, uh, performance tasks for geometry for uh, high school, particularly grade seven. And this could also be used for grades uh, eight and nine. So let me just bring my uh, presentation to the screen. So as you have seen earlier, Dr. Sarmiento flashed our URL, uh, our uh, website for the Math Plus resources. So uh, if you visit our site, you can download the grade 7 to 10 apps there and you will observe that these have been arranged uh, based on the uh, different uh, strands there's algebra geometry numbers and operations statistics and probability and we also have a mapping from the most essential learning competencies and the corresponding app that may be used uh, to address this particular uh, competency. And moreover, there are also some teaching guides uh, for each particular uh, activity. So here, uh, for example, what you see on the screen uh, for grade seven, quarter three, exploring the bisectors of triangles, particularly the in-center, uh, which, uh, so there are suggested uh, guide questions as well on how to use the app to address this particular competency. So uh, as uh, you know from stated from the DepEd memo released last October, there were a list of uh, uh, suggestions for performance tasks uh, for blended learning. And you see some of these in the screen. Uh, I would want to address uh, these particular uh, items in the performance task that I will be showing uh, this morning. So there is a constructing graphs from surveys conducted, multimedia presentation, probability experiments, uh, problem posing, reasoning and proof uh, during online classes. So video demonstration using measuring tools and devices, a video presentation using manipulatives to show math concepts and solve problems. So I will be presenting two performance tasks uh, for geometry, uh, which uh, you can use as a sample as you create more for other uh, uh, geometry lessons from grade seven to 10. So in particular, I will be showing uh, this activity. I would like to, uh, to call this Banois Milk Tea at Enchanted Kingdom. So this uh, is uh, for grade seven, quarter three, but uh, for grades eight as well and nine, this activity can be improved accordingly. So uh, the most essential learning competency here is solving problems involving size and angles of a polygon, particularly triangles. So it is uh, important, uh, first of all, in our performance task to describe uh, what uh, is the task all about. So in this case, uh, this task provides a real life application in which students gain experience and discover the significance of triangle center, such as the centroid, the in-center, the circumcenter, and ortho center. And there are four apps uh, that you can download for these uh, topics in the website. So the Ge this is a GeoGebra app. And uh, the GeoGebra actually 
is a uh, geometric and algebra software and you can create as well apps uh, that can be used not just for Android uh, devices, but for iOS as well. So there are two uh, particular uh, ways to access a GeoGebra app. You can download and play the GeoGebra app as well, or you could also use uh, the GeoGebra software to open the app. So uh, the task for this particular, uh, uh, this, this example I'm showing is for the research team. So that means students can work on uh, as a group here, maybe four or at least four students. So the task is for the team to present and discuss a proposal to the president and CEO of Enchanted Kingdom regarding the best possible location of uh, Banois milk tea stall so that it will be strategic to three most popular rides in the park. So they will be uh, constructing graphs from a particular survey, multimedia presentation. They will, this is an example of a problem uh, being posed uh, through a real life situation, uh, exploring uh, particular triangle centers, and they will have the opportunity to reason out uh, their proof uh, through the presentation or the selection of the site. And they can prepare a video using measuring tools, which I will show in a while. So what is the output expected here? So first, they are to prepare a multimedia presentation. This could be a PowerPoint presentation, even a video demo, and uh, even a poster, where they will include the location of uh, the milk tea stall uh, and explain how this particular location was determined. Uh, moreover, what are the advantages and disadvantages of the location chosen so that they will be providing uh, particular justifications uh, via sound geometric uh, principles supporting the choice. And observe that there is no correct answer here. And it is also possible to have more than one scenario. And maps, pictures, would be very good to support the recommendation. For example, plotting the location and proximities using Google Maps or Google Earth, which is another uh, technology tool, very helpful in real life uh, problems. So uh, you could uh, possibly give uh, some introduction when you set up the mathematical task, uh, students can uh, start thinking about this task and you might ask them questions like, have they ever visited Enchanted Kingdom or an, an amusement park? What was their experience at getting a snack in between rides? And what they think would be a location that would be central to most customers in the park? the location which will provide easy access to the stand and attract more potential customers. Now, in order to be guided of the strategic location of the stall, then uh, it would be good to introduce the Math Plus app or apps and the students can explore the definition the properties of the four centers of a triangle. So for example, what you see here in the screen, uh, the student will uh, choose the choice of the center and uh, they can explore the app extensively. So here is now the situation. First, they will have to conduct a survey among classmates and friends 
uh, ideally at least 50 respondents. Um, maybe uh, if their classmates, uh, uh, they, that, that would probably, if they are in a class of 40 or 45, plus probably other members of their family or friends, they can easily come up with uh, 50 respondents and uh, identify, they will identify the three most popular rides and locations in the park. Uh, they can visit uh, the Enchanted Kingdom site to help identify choice locations uh, in the park. So, uh, for example, uh, a part of their selection, this could be, say, Jungle Log Jump. The space shuttle, for instance, so they can include this at the sur as in the survey, and they can come up with the three most popular rides, or maybe actually they could even have two possible locations, uh, two sets of possible locations. And in the course of the exploration, for example, they can investigate the properties of, say, the in-center, so uh, thus, these three locations uh, are actually uh, the three vertices of the triangle. And uh, would uh, the location be inside the triangle? For example, would, be, would uh, this uh, point be ideally the point of concurrency of the angle bisectors so that it is the in center of the triangle. So these are uh, the ideas that can be uh, investigated through the app. So uh, here are some ideas or concepts that the, you as a teacher can highlight while students are using this particular app. For example, the in-center is the center of the triangle's inscribed circle. And this in-center is always inside the triangle. The perpendicular segments from the center to the sides of the triangle serve as radii of the inscribed circle. And you can measure the lengths of the perpendicular segments from the center to the sides of the triangle and confirm that the lengths are equal. And uh, verify the in-center for various triangles. So you can vary the triangles. Uh, the triangle may be a right triangle. It may be an obtuse or equilateral triangle. And explore what will happen to the in-center. These are just some sample guide questions in uh, exploring the in-center through the app. So you could also uh, uh, say, uh, look at uh, different possibilities as I've mentioned earlier, as the triangle would change. So here or uh, this situation for a right triangle, for instance, and the student can investigate what happens to the in-center or to the inscribed circle if the circle continues to be inscribed. Then the circumcenter, for example, could this pose to be a best location for the three popular rides or locations of the rides the student, uh, students uh, have identified? And the circumcenter has the property that the three perpendicular bisectors of a triangle are concurrent, as what you see here on the screen. And this point of concurrency of the perpendicular bisectors is precisely the circumcenter. And observe here that the circle is circumscribed. So uh, this uh, could pose another possible site for the milk tea stand. So there's also the centroid. So the medians of a triangle are concurrent at a point called the centroid of the triangle. And the median of a triangle is a segment whose endpoints 
or a vertex of the triangle and the midpoint of the opposite side. And the median divides a triangle into two smaller triangles with equal areas. And uh, finally, there's also the orthocenter where the lines containing the altitudes are concurrent. So the student can uh, justify these four uh, locations and the choice of their locations uh, after they have explored the applications. So these applications will be helpful as they formulate their ideas in relation to the selection of the site, given the three uh, locations of the vertices of the triangle. So in their presentation, the students will be considering the four different types of circle centers, and they will be asked to clearly establish the assumptions that were necessary in order to arrive at the solution. And uh, there will be uh, evidences presented of the distance between the stall and the tree rides using Google Earth or other map application to support the answer. So here are some more ideas. So in the proposal analysis, students may or a student may justify the appropriate use depending on its application. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, will it be important, for example, that the center be equidistant from the three vertices or sides of the triangle? Should it be that the center, when connected by a line segment to each location, creates three portions that are equal in area? Should the circle be circumscribed about or inscribed in, in the triangle? So, and is this choice actually realistic in a given situation? Because uh, yes, uh, the mathematics or the geometric principles might support the particular choice, but some variations. So here is when the students can actually give uh, 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 the application vis-a-vis -vis the actual situation in the park. Is there another possibly stall close by? So is this the, the stall where this center is uh, located? Is this actually really a, a good location or would you want it to be a little more uh, uh, closer in proximity? to the best or the most popular ride in the, in the uh, park. So these kinds of analysis, the students can, they can brainstorm and they can uh, use, of course, their own intuitive skills no? uh, as to what would uh, be a good situation. So I would suggest that Google Earth, for example, is a very good tool to supplement this situation because uh, they get uh, different views of the park. They can zoom in and zoom out to plot the locations and to measure distances in the park. So uh, actually, uh, you just have a Gmail account Probably one of the team members can uh, create their Gmail, their email, and they can go to explore projects because so when you explore Google Earth, you see uh, a very varied uh, menu from uh, the Voyager to the projects to mapping style to uh, e even a feedbacking system. I would like to invite uh, the teachers to even explore Google Earth. And you can use this conveniently to triangulate the points in the park. So for example, here, uh, a possible choice is the Wheel of Fate located in a particular uh, location in the park, the Rio Grande Rapids. This is one of my favorite rides in the park. Be ready to be wet. 
Then there is the bouncing boulder. Because sometimes uh, I would uh, like something a little, yung bang medyo mababaw na ride. So the bouncing boulder is one of these. And this is an example of uh, how I would triangulate the, the locations of the vertices using uh, Google Earth. And would Banay's milk tea stall be somewhere here? So this is uh, one that uh, the student can use. So they can measure here the distances in using Google Earth. They can zoom in to get a better approximation of the distance to support their answer. So this is an example of what they could include, say, in the poster or the multimedia, in their multimedia video or presentation, how they could triangulate the points. And um, this would definitely be something that would be exciting for them as they uh, create their proposal. And of course, additional visualization could be provided through the park map or other photos. They could print the map. They could use a compass or a ruler to do the triangulation to support the result that was done using technology. Or even just do the triangulation using compass and ruler uh, would also be a good alternative. And other photos uh, could definitely be used in their presentation. So there is no uh, limit as to the possibilities of uh, the visualization that they could provide in their proposal. So you, they could also create uh, some sheets such as this where they can triangulate the different or, or, or show the different triangle centers. They can list down the attributes and they can include this in their presentation. So here is another uh, way to present uh, the site. They could list down the pros and the cons. What are the positive points of selecting site one? What are the disadvantages so that the president or the CEO could best decide as to what would be the location given their different recommendations. So this will allow them to engage among themselves, brainstorm with respect to the ideas, and present this. So this will also give them the opportunity to articulate the proof as to the selection in their own words and uh, not, uh, however, based on sound geometric principles. So here is an example or a sample rubric which you could use, say, if uh, we have 10 points, then, of course, the geometric principles used to arrive at the site. So I just showed three possibilities here. You could extend this rubric. So say the site was selected with minimal mathematical justification or the site was selected with some ground sound uh, geometric principles but has some flaws or some execution was uh, there some mistakes, or the site was selected using sound geometric principles. So there is this whole range of how you could give the points. Then of course, the visuals, the figures, how they have argued through the advantages and disadvantages based on their sound research and the geometric principles, the accuracy of the mathematical solution, and the assumptions and the data to arrive at a solution are adequately presented. So these are some criteria that, that you could use and uh, you could uh, vary accordingly. Now, uh, the second uh, example I would like to show, this you could, the student could use, do as an individual project or possibly also as a group work. So creating a company logo using congruent triangles. So the competency here is proving two triangles are congruent. So we have an app uh, which is prove it, no? where they can explore different properties of congruent triangles. So the aim here is to construct a company logo for a metro rail company using at least a pair of congruent triangles. Pwede isang pair, more than one, mas maganda. 
We have uh, then here, of course, the multimedia presentation. Again, this is problem posing, reasoning and proof to justify the logo. And of course, video demonstration. So these are among the key points of this performance task that could be uh, addressed. No? So they could uh, explore, prove it. Uh, here are some guide questions to explore SAS using the app. And uh, here are some uh, logos which use uh, triangles. You could actually even as a preliminary exercise, ask them to uh, identify if there are congruent triangles here, say in the second logo or the Delta logo or or the Mitsubishi Motors and then justify justify just to as a warm up exercise to creating now their own logo, a similar logo using triangles. So there will be, of course, an explanation of their choice of the logo, the proof of the congruent triangles, which they can articulate through the video or through a poster that they are going to create. And of course, the figures to support the recommendation. And you could uh, check for the completeness when you do the rubric, the presence of congruence triangles, uh, the geometric principles used, co correct congruence, say SA, SSS, the accurateness of the proof, and the creativity, and of course, the presentation itself. So these two examples that I have shown here are, are uh, performance tasks in geometry uh, that you could um, ask your students to create using uh, some of the apps that we have. And you can use this as an example, and I invite you to create more materials using the various uh, apps as aid or tools for the students to use. And hopefully, this can be helpful. Sa geometry kasi, ang daming possibilities, no? Kasi we see a lot of the use of geometry in real life situations. Actually, not just here when we make corporate decisions, such as what I've shown here, but even in uh, exploring the presence of geometry in nature through tessellations, for example, that are found in architecture, that are found, say, in uh, indigenous material, yung mga weaving uh, uh, patterns uh, ng indigenous communities natin. Makakahanap tayo doon ng mga congruent uh, triangles. So, ang lawak ng possibilities na pwede talaga sa geometry. And I... Uh, uh, this is something exciting, so I, I hope that you can uh, enjoy uh, creating more geometry performance tasks and assessment uh, strategies uh, in the next uh, months. So thank you very much, and I will end my presentation here. So it is my honor as well to introduce my, my uh, uh, teammate, uh, Dr. Aberin who will talk more about uh, assessment tasks and performance tasks in high school, this time naman using algebra. So, uh, Alva, may I invite you to come on board? And good morning to you, Alva. Morning. Uh, thank you so much for that uh, uh, presentation on performance tasks on geometry indeed uh, it is an exciting field no? uh, with or without the apps you can create a lot of performance tasks but for my part i shall be uh, sharing with you performance tasks on uh, which can be used in algebra and we shall be uh, using uh, three apps that are uh, available in the website that we had. Uh, it has been uh, shared with you already. Uh, you have, uh, we have varied uh, apps there, but I will just focus on three apps 
uh, today. All right, so here we go. Uh, a lot has been said about performance tasks. Uh, often it is associated with authentic tasks because there has been an effort or in a way emphasis uh, and prioritizing uh, math problems in the context of uh, uh, real life situations. No? Actually, over the years, they have different um, views about uh, performance tasks that some would say it doesn't really have to be in the context of a uh, real life situation as long as it is open-ended and assesses uh, student problem solving skills uh, but it is an altern alternative assessment not just a simple uh, multiple choice type of uh, questions wherein there is just one specific answer to to the problem uh, but so far, you have seen from the three presentations, you have seen uh, different types of performance tasks. Uh, and I shall share with you now um, these uh, three uh, performance tasks in uh, algebra, which will make use of the AlgeOps apps, linear ops, and draw line uh, mathematical apps found in the website. If you've been with us for the previous webinars, uh, we have discussed all these uh, three apps with you. Um, and I hopefully you have uh, experienced already how it is used in, or you have uh, in a way tried the apps already. Uh, but if not, uh, I'll show it a bit to you and explain how things uh, will go or how you will use it but uh, you cannot create your performance task using the apps without you trying it out uh, that's the best way to do it that's the way to go all right so uh, let's use the algae ops and address uh, the objective or the competency on adding and uh, subtracting polynomials I think this is in grade seven, in quarter two. Uh, the algae ops uh, has two modes, the addition and subtraction mode. Uh, let me just go over this quickly. Uh, it provides you know, the visualization and um, uh, actually the animation of combining uh, uh, polynomials or you at times you can it, it can even be applied to uh, adding integers as well but in, in this context we can treat this as a polynomial um, so the app allows you to create or represent what you have at the top okay by using these buttons no uh, so you just use the plus sign or the minus sign for positive or negative boxes and balloons. So let me just do that. So recall, you can create your four red boxes and one a ba red balloon, three red green boxes, four red, four green balloons. And the app will do the cancellation, no, the neutralization. Uh, so if your students are... If you've used this in class, they will clearly see and be able to uh, uh, apply uh, or add the polynomials. And there you go, you can input the, the answers. You know? One red box and three green balloons. All right. So as they are... Uh, uh, as they have seen and practice on this, no, one possible uh, task that you can uh, do with them or ask them to do using the ma this mathematical app is this one. No, uh, task one is they can draw or list possible scenarios 
where the sum of the balloons and the boxes uh, is the same as that of the given diagram. So for this example, uh, you have uh, what we had a while ago, four red box boxes, one balloon, red balloon, plus three green boxes, and uh, one four red balloons. As we have seen, the answer is one red and four, uh, uh, sorry, this should be uh, uh, three red, three green balloons. So uh, you can ask them uh, uh, what other possible scenarios uh, can they create such that the answer will be one red box and three green balloons and then they symbolize the the diagrams using variables now uh of course there are so many problems i'm meaning so many possible answers to this what you can do is you can give a condition such that you have uh, a maximum number of boxes and balloons to use that is six for each okay uh six because that's the allow uh, possible number of boxes allowed in the in the app no? so you can make that uh, condition uh, so one possible solution is this no they can say they can draw six six uh, uh red boxes and two red balloons and then add it to five green boxes and five green balloons okay and uh it would result to one red box and three green balloons Okay, and they can symbolize it using the variable x and the uh, number uh, negative two and five. And you can also ask them to justify why this is the case. No? Uh, what happens when you have six red boxes and five green balloons? Note that there are so many possible answers to this. Okay. And thus, the, you can uh, uh, minimize the chance of them cheating or repeating the same answers. No, they would just copy the answer of their classmates. No? So, uh, but uh, you can also ask them to exhaust everything. All right. Um, okay. Uh, they would differ in terms of their explanation also. Right. Now, um, one uh, uh, way to check their solutions is to create a rubric. Uh, in the different presentations, uh, different types of rubrics were already uh, shared with you. Um, for this one, I can share with you an analytical and task-specific uh, rubric which make use of the following criteria. No? You can uh, look at their processes and strategies. You can look at their solution, their presentation, and how they communicated their, uh, their answers or their solutions. And for each of these criteria or criteria, let's say under processes, you have different levels. Uh, you can think of this as points as well. Uh, that is from zero, this is level zero to level four. And each of these levels have their descriptions. For example, for level zero, there is really no attempt, blank, no, no answer at all. Or there could be an answer, but it's not meaningful. Uh, parang nag, ano lang, nag scribble, nag scribble, scribble lang, no? So you can put that as uh, level zero. And level one, there is a strategy which is part meaningful but not that effective. And level two, uh, 
the process it could lead to the correct answer, but it's not systematic. And level three on processes and strategies, the, these are effective and systematic. For example, in that particular task, they made use of a table. No? That is, they start with, uh, they could start with two red boxes and then one green box and then three and then three red, then two, two green. So there is a, a way uh, of systematizing the possible solutions. No? So if they did that, they could be at level three or give points corresponding to level three. And then, but you could have a, a fourth level wherein creativity is included in their solution. So these are just some, some, some suggestions how you can check the solutions of your students in terms of processes and strategies. The next level is in terms of solutions. No? Again, there are four levels here. Uh, notice the, uh, the rubric is task specific. That means for that particular task, notice that level one, two, and later on three and four, it pertains to the tasks of identifying the possible numbers of balloons and boxes or uh, both of them. Okay, so that's what we mean by task specific uh, rubric. That is, it pertains to what uh, action that they would do for that particular task. Okay, and then the third category is in terms of presentation or communicating their uh, solutions, which is also important. No? And that's a, uh, an important skill that we need to develop also among our students because they might have uh, uh, gotten the correct answer, but it's a different, it's a different and important skill to communicate that answer as well and that uh, uh, presenting it in an organized and concise manner. So that's why I think it's important that you include this in your rubric so that young as they are, even there, even they are in the in the elementary or in the secondary levels, they are trained how to present and uh, their work in an organized way and uh, clear uh, and concise manner. All right. Uh, so you have levels one to four also for uh, uh, for this criterion, presentation and communication. Okay, and then uh, this is the subtraction mode of the algae ops. You're given a different uh, main screen and you're tasked to remove the two red boxes and one green uh, balloon and you make use of this minus signs, no? So you remove two, two boxes twice. So you click it this twice and uh, uh, that's removed. And then you remove one green. So you use this. No? If you recall, that's how we did it last time. Uh, and you have this one uh, red box as, as the answer. So similarly, uh, you can create this task. No? Note it's very, it's uh, parallel to what we had in uh, task one. That is, they list possible scenarios uh, where uh, the answer, the difference to this problem it would be the same. No? So in this case, if uh, the, the answer is uh, 2, 4, 6, 8 green, and uh, five green uh, balloons as well. So they, you can ask them to symbolize their work also. And again, you have the choice of uh, giving conditions on the number of boxes and balloons allowed. You know? uh, in this case, for example, I give you uh, eight as the maximum number of boxes and balloons in their answers. No? Uh, you can limit it to five. It's really, it's really up to you as to how many boxes uh, you want them to use. And so again, uh, this is an open-ended task. You have many possible answers, 
it is good if your students are able to exhaust everything no? to provide all possible answers. And they can do that no? because you have given uh, a limit to the number of boxes involved. If you will not give this condition, then there would be infinitely many possible solutions. So it is good that you give a condition. No? So in a way, it would lessen your uh, checking time and also uh, allow your students to be uh, comprehensive and they would be able to exhaust all possible answers. And again, uh, you can use this uh, criterion or criteria to assess, uh, to create your rubric and assess the, uh, or give a score to your uh, students' work. All right, so that's for the algae ops. Now, uh, the second one is on linear ops, which is this, not the second one, this one, okay? Linear ops uh, is also on patterns which addresses the competency of illustrating linear equations and finding the solutions of the uh, linear equation. So the linear ops will help students visualize the addition and multiplication properties of equality and use these properties to solve linear equations in one variables. No? So notice you have this representation of the uh, linear equation, uh, which could be what? 3x plus uh, 6 equal to negative uh, 3. All right? Uh, so diba, in solving uh, this uh, linear equation, we use the addition property of equality. That is, we have to add uh, the inverses of this green uh circles so that means you make use of this red circle uh you have to add that how many times six so if you press the uh, red circle six times okay you will have okay sorry you will have pressed this six times you will uh, create this representation no? Eventually, you will have three green boxes here and nine red circles on the right. Okay, And then the multiplication property of uh, equality is applied. So uh, that is you divide uh, all this nine into the three boxes. So there must be three in each box. But since they are of different colors, the answer must be red or negative. So click that, drag the cursor to the left until negative uh, 3. And then you can verify your answer. And there you go. The three red circles are now inside each, each box. So that's the linear ops. Okay. So what's a task that can be done? No. In parallel to the two tasks, you, they can also create their own possible situations uh, where the solution to the corresponding equation is, is the same as that of the given. Note the answer here is negative 3. So again, there are so many possible uh, situations that will create a negative 3 as an answer. So you ask them to symbolize it. But of course, you may want to limit the number of boxes and circles uh, in their solutions, no? Para hindi naman sobrang dami yung ibibigay nilang sagot. Okay? Again, uh, it's up to you how many boxes uh, you want them to use. But in a way, um, actually, pwede yung gawin in a, for, a, for a student, for a set of students, iba yung maximum number of boxes nila. Okay, para iba-iba talaga yung, ano, yung, yung solution sa makukuha ng mga bata to minimize uh, copying of answers as well. Okay, so again, the, uh, or that is task three, right? Now for task four, uh, another possible task is to ask the students to create a story out of this representation. No? They make a story that is represented by, let's say, 
3x plus 6, 6 equal to negative 3. Okay. Uh, so in a way, uh, this could this task could be uh, integrated with English, no? Because in that sense, they will create or a story or write sentences or a paragraph which uh, will apply English principles uh, along the way no? as they create that story. Okay, and you can create a rubric, similar rubric for for this. Yeah, I think that's for the linear ops. And finally, for the last one, draw line, we all we also uh, 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 showed or demonstrated this app last time, uh, which will graph linear equations given these conditions and also find its equation. Uh, it will address these competencies. Uh, so the draw line app, you can help students create a line using different modes. The first one is uh, you're given the y-intercept here, and you uh, can use a, can input a slope, or you can input two points, or a point and a slope. Okay. So what's a possible uh, task? Okay. So you can create this uh, situation wherein uh, Mr. Carlos has two designs for his parole. Uh, this is the first design and this is the second design. Okay. And then you can ask them to use the draw line app to create possible equations of the lines determined by the frame of the parole. So in this case, how many frames? You have one, two, three, four, meaning lines on the frame. One, two, uh, two, four, six, eight. So you have eight uh, lines which can be determined by the frames of the uh, parole. And you can use the draw line app to, you, uh, to find the equations of this uh, design, uh, uh, the lines determined by the frame of this design. Now, for this example, it's quite easy because they can use what? They can use the two points, no? Uh, mode of the draw line app, and it is seen here, no? Kita naman yan. Kita siya. Okay? They can uh, uh, identify the points. All right? But for the second design, no? Notice it's not placed on the XY plane. So it's up to them how they will create or what points they will use, uh, what slope they will use, okay, as they input or that with that they will input in the app, okay. And again, uh, because the points are not uh, given or the the design is not placed in the x y plane such as the first one, no, they could create their own points, no. Uh, they could choose their own points. There could they could choose the same uh, uh, different uh, slopes, no? For uh, for the lines determined by the frame of of the parole. Okay. Uh, actually, there is a task six, which which you can ask them to create a design for their own parole, for your own parole, no? It did not be this. Uh, uh, this is an example of uh, of their parole. But as we know, there are different uh, designs, no? So they can be creative in in making a design for their parole. No, uh, science. Ano sana to, di ba? Uh, Very appropriate for the Christmas season, but. Uh, for you can adjust it such that the the design is uh, the figure uh, could be uh, appropriate to that particular quarter where this topic is um, is discussed. Okay, uh, for if it's for February, probably uh, flowers, no or. Uh, 
uh, what have you, no? or different cards as well, no? if you want. All right. So the, uh, again, the analytic rubric can be can be used as well. All right. Uh, I think that's it. No. Yeah. Those are the three uh, mathematical apps. Uh, which you can use to design performance tasks in your classes. Uh, and uh, again, these are your, where you can, uh, your references to go to and check out the, uh, the Math Plus resources apps. Uh, okay, so those are the performance tasks in, in uh, uh, algebra. So you had you have already the uh, performance task in the grade school, in the high school geometry and um, uh, algebra. Now uh, my teammate, Dr. Mark uh, Tolentino, will now take the floor and uh, uh, share with you different mathematical or other performance tasks in the strand of statistics. So Dr. Mark, you may uh, take the floor. Thank you very much, Dr. Abirin. Uh, magandang umaga po muli sa lahat ng mga nakikinig sa atin or nanonood sa atin sa YouTube. Uh, thank you for joining us this morning. So uh, like Dr. Abirin said, uh, this time I'm going to be presenting some ideas, some suggestions for doing performance tasks in statistics using our statistical platform called uh, Senso Escuela Pilipinas. So in statistics, uh, of course, it's very important uh, to teach our students the knowledge and the skills uh, in doing statistics. But aside from that, it's also very important that the students appreciate where uh, these topics, these ideas can actually be used and how they can occur in real life situations. Now, especially now, uh, data is very important. We see a lot of data, we encounter a lot of data every day. So knowing statistics, uh, interpreting data, analyzing data, and even organizing data is very important. So uh, it's very important that we also provide our students good opportunities for uh, uh, applying what they've learned uh, in their statistics classes. So before I begin with the uh, performance task, uh, for the benefit of everyone who might have uh, missed our previous webinars, uh, I will begin with a short uh, introduction of our Senso Escuela Pilipinas platform, and then I will proceed to discussing our performance tasks. So let me share my screen.
Hello, I'm Mark Tolentino from the Math Plus team of the Ateneo de Manila University. Today, I will be presenting Senso Escuela Filipinas, or SET for short, which is a component of our project devoted to providing resources for teaching and learning statistics. Primarily, SET is an online platform that serves as a rich source of data and resources for teaching and learning grades 1 to 11 statistics. It consists of a database that will be populated by the data of students from answering our SET survey, which collects authentic, relevant, and relatable data. Our SET database provides readily accessible data that can be used for various activities for teaching and learning statistics at any grade level. Moreover, our resources include teaching guides, student worksheets, and video demonstrations dedicated to the use of SEP in the classroom. SEP can be freely accessed at mathplusresources.com. For the remainder of my presentation, I'll be discussing how to use this online platform, SEP. When you go to mathplusresources.com, this is the homepage that you will see. If you're a teacher who's a new user to our website, the first thing you should do is to register an account with us. To do this, simply click on the register here link. And this page will show up. In order to create an account, you have to provide an email address that ends with .edu, edu.ph, gov, gov.ph, or .org. But don't worry if you don't have such an email available. You can still create an account with us by sending a request to mathplusapps at gmail.com. Once you've filled in all the required information, just click on register. This will send a verification email to the email address that you provided. To complete your account registration, just click on the verify email address button. With your account registration completed, you can now log in to SET. Once you're logged in, you will see the teacher section shown in the screen. In general, using the SET platform consists of a four-step process. You have to create classes and student codes. Then you have to distribute these student codes to your classes. These first two steps can be done using the Manage Classes feature in your teacher section. Next. We will have the students answer the SEP survey, which you can view using the View the Survey button. Once all the responses are in, you can then retrieve the data for different activities for teaching and learning statistics. So you can access the data using the Access Data feature, and you can also check out our teaching guides for help in using these data for your classes. Now, going into more detail, let's look at the first two steps of the process and look at the Manage Classes feature. In the Manage Classes feature, you will see this page. First, we have to create classes. To create a new class, simply click the Create New Class button that's shown on the right. Then you have to fill in the class name, the grade level, section, and the number of students in the class. With those information in, you can then click Save. Once the class has been created, you can then access this class using the Select Class drop-down in the upper portion of the screen. And this is how it will look like if you access the class that you created. As you can see, there is a Download Student Codes box at the bottom. If you click this Download Student Codes button, it will download a spreadsheet file into your computer. This file will contain the student codes that you can then distribute to your students. Now, let's go back to our process and check out the third step, which is having the students answer the SEP survey. So students will have to go to mathplusresources.com as well, but then Instead of clicking in login as teacher, they will click login as student and this screen will show up and they have to enter the student code 
that you provided them. Once they're inside the website, this is student section that they will see. In order to answer the survey, they have, they have to click the take the survey button. Our SEP survey consists of 31 questions that involve uh, relatable and relevant information for the students. So there are questions that are typical, like height. There are questions about their hometown, their hobbies, and even some interactive questions. Once they've finished answering the survey, they will see a badge page that looks like this. They can take a screenshot of this badge page and send the screenshot to you as proof that they have completed a survey. Please take note that nowhere in the website will the students have to enter his or her name or any other information that will lead to his or her identity. This is why such a badge page is important to give proof that the students have already completed the survey. Now, let's go to the last step of our four-step process, which is retrieving the data. So first, let's look at the access data feature. This is the access data page. In the first panel, you can download your own class data. In order to do that, you simply have to select one of the classes that you have created, and then you have to select any number of questions that you would like to to get the data for. In the second panel, you can download a random sample from the entire SEP database. In order to do this, you just need to select the school year, grade level, and the sample size that you want. Similarly, you also have to select the questions that you would like to get the data for. If you're happy with your choices, Click search and a download report button will appear at the bottom of the screen. Clicking this button will download a spreadsheet file into your computer that will contain the data that you requested. Now let's look at the teaching guide section of the website. In this section, you will see teaching guides and student worksheets for different topics in the grade school, junior high school, and senior high school levels. These teaching guides and student worksheets are aligned with the depth and most essential learning competencies. These are sample graphs that you can create using the SEP data. We will now talk about how to use SEP, or specifically data from the SEP database in designing performance tasks. Mainly, I will be suggesting two performance tasks for grade seven to 11, but of course, these can be easily adjusted for the other grade levels as well. So let's get right into it. The first performance task is called from SEP to infographic, which is a performance task for grade seven to 10 classes. First, let's discuss the goal of the task. The learners will have to select a topic for an info infographic based on a realistic scenario given to them. So they won't just be picking a random or an easy topic, but they will be picking based on due consideration for the situation presented to them. Then by accessing SEP, they will retrieve data that they think will be helpful in making a good, info a good infographic for the topic they selected. Finally, the students will organize, process, and analyze these data so that they can create an infographic on their chosen topic. Next, let's talk about the role of the learners in this performance task. The learners will play the role of a researcher and a writer for a social media page that mainly posts interesting information like hobbies, activities, interests about the Filipino youth. So maybe you know this, but in different social media platforms and even video sharing platforms, there are many pages and accounts focusing on various topics and interests. Most of our students are familiar with these. So in fact, most likely uh, they are following some of these pages or accounts, you know, the ones that are uh, consistent with their own hobbies or interests. 
And in this activity, uh, they get to play the role of a team member, maybe an employee or a freelancer or a volunteer for one of these social media pages. Next, let's look at the audience. So for this uh, activity, the learners are expected to create their output with the general, with the general public as the intended audience. Uh, of course, they can also focus, for example, on their fellow grade 7 to 10 students who might be interested in knowing the hobbies, interests, or activities of young people their age. Now, uh, because they're creating uh, for the social media page, so their infographic, at least in the scenario, will be accessible by the public. Uh, but of course, when we implement this activity with our classes, the students don't really need to post their work in public. They can just submit their work to their respective teachers, but depending on you, you can uh, maybe organize a session with them wherein students from the same class or maybe the same batch will share their work with each other for feedback. And if you want to, you can also set up a mini competition wherein uh, the students will vote for their favorite infographic. Next, let's look at the situation. So the situation is that the administrator, or, or as we call it now, the admin of the social media page is asking the page's researchers and writers to submit new infographics that can be posted on the page. So of course, the admin wants the infographic to be interesting so that it will increase engagement for the social media page. So uh, for the current followers, there could be uh, increased activity. Maybe they will share more or comment more or like more. And then maybe for um, others who have not yet followed the page, they will be attracted by the infographic and then that will lead to them actually following the social media page. Uh, of course, the admin doesn't want to fake, doesn't want to post uh, fake news or malicious information in the page. So the infographic should be based on real data. So given that, uh, the researchers and the writers or our learners are now faced with the following tasks. So they have to determine a suitable topic for the infographic based on the available data in the SEP database. They will process and organize the data into graphs or charts. They will analyze these data and uh, the graphs or charts that they have created. And using these, they will design and create an infographic with the graphs or charts integrated in a creative or meaningful way that presents clear, concise, and interesting information on the chosen topic. So usually for infographics, there's a creative twist to it. Like sometimes the charts will use icons or pictures of real objects related to the topic, or sometimes they have this clever way of uh, doing the layout or organizing the content in the page. So most of the time as well, the, the infographic has a key message that is emphasized by the way the data is presented. And then sometimes you want to maximize also not just understanding, but also the impact of the infographic. So that's the situation. We'll, uh, of course, the product for this performance task is the infographic that addresses the situation presented. Now, you can give your students options. Uh, the infographic can be created using a computer, or maybe if they have a tablet, they can also create their infographic using their tablets, or of course they can go also with uh, pen and paper or other writing materials or creative materials like uh, watercolor, colored pencils. They want to use paint, they can also do that. Since we're in an online setting, uh, the learners of course uh, only have to submit a soft copy, maybe a picture or a screenshot of their work to their respective teachers. Now for the standards or our rubrics for grading, uh, there will be four criteria on the topic. So for the topic, of course, it has to be very suitable for the situation described. It should be interesting. And again, uh, as far as the scenario is concerned, it should likely generate a high number of engagements for the social media page. Now, in terms of the graphs or the charts used, of course, they have to be correct. So the type of graph or chart should be suitable for the data. Uh, they have to be perfectly constructed. Um, the, the parts are complete, uh, the process they followed to create the chart should be, uh, should be correct. And then, of course, the organization, so the, the infographic should be neat to look at. Uh, it shouldn't be messy. And again, the, the idea of an infographic is you want to present the data uh, more easily. So, so the organization should achieve that. 
And then the fourth criterion is design and creativity. As I mentioned before, uh, for an infographic, there's usually uh, a creative twist to it. And uh, the you, we want our students to present uh, not only uh, to make the infographic more attractive, but also to make it more impactful. Okay. Now, uh, this activity or this performance task is for grades 7 to 10. But just as a sample, uh, I'm showing here some MELCs that can be addressed by this performance task. So this is for uh, grade seven statistics classes. Of course, you can pick out also MELCs for grades eight, nine, or 10. Okay, so this is for the first uh, performance task from SEP to infographic. Now let's go to the second performance task, which is hypothesis testing using SEP data. This one is a performance task for the 11 statistics classes. So as the title suggests, uh, the learners in this activity will formulate their hypotheses on at least three quantities pertaining to some specified activities that, uh, of course, I will explain later. Then they have to test their hypotheses using the appropriate process or processes. And they have to prepare a written report containing the complete details of the hypothesis tests they perform, as well as their conclusions and recommendations based on these. So in this performance task, our learners will play the role of researchers for a nonprofit organization that promotes the health and welfare of Filipino youth. So the, the setting is more formal for this one. The audience for the activity will be uh, the set of officers for the nonprofit organization. So they have to, that's why they have to come up with a formal report because they're submitting this to the organization's officers. Now, uh, of course, these officers actually need something, and that's what we have here in the situation. So the officers of the nonprofit organization, uh, with their advocacy uh, for uh, the welfare and health of the youth, so they're thinking of possible new programs or information campaigns that can help the Filipino youth. But before that, before they can decide on on these programs or campaigns, they of course need some data. So they need information on the time spent by Filipino children or teens in doing different activities such as sleeping, studying, playing video games, or engaging in social media. Of course, uh, these data are available on the SEP database. So the learners are now faced with the following tasks. They have to determine the activities as well as an age group probably uh, that their report will focus on. So depending on the size of the groups that you will use for this performance task uh, to determine uh, how much uh, you want them to do. Do you want them to focus on many activities across all age groups? Uh, if you're working in smaller group sizes, then maybe you can ask them to focus on just one or two activities and maybe only one age group so that you know their work will not be uh, too big. Now, once they've decided that, they will formulate and test at least three hypotheses pertaining to the time spent by Filipino youth doing the chosen activities. So, for example, the, the students might have chosen to focus on uh, the topic of studying versus playing video games. So, they can make a hypothesis about the population mean or maybe a population ratio with regard to the time spent on studying versus uh, playing video games. So, so for example, uh, maybe they can compare the population means of uh, the time spent for studying versus the time spent for playing video games. But of course, for, for these population means, they have to first uh, test if they actually have uh, a good value for these population means. Okay. Now, once they've done their tests, they will make conclusions and recommendations based on their findings. So they have to remember, again, the context of the activity. So based on their tests, based on their results, what kind of uh, information campaigns or new programs can the nonprofit organization possibly come up with to promote the health and welfare of Filipino youth? And then, of course, they will prepare a written report containing the complete details of their hypothesis tests, they and of course, their conclusions and recommendations. Okay. 
So, of course, uh, I've already mentioned the product will be a written report detailing their computations, analysis, conclusions, and recommendations. For this activity, this will be the standards. Our rubric for grading will be, uh, again, based on four criteria. The first one uh, on the topics and hypothesis. So we want the topic selected to be suitable for the situation described. Uh, the hypothesis should not be too shallow or too easy. So they have to formulate these very carefully so that there's really uh, the intention of discover discovering um, deeper insight about the data that they have selected. Uh, of course, the, their computations uh, have to be correct. So their, uh, the correctness of hypothesis tests will be one criterion. And then their conclusions and recommendations should be sound, should be based on their uh, computations and uh, their recommendations should address the situation and it should reflect a deeper understanding of the scenario and the results of tests. And of course, uh, their written report should be um, created in a nice way. So it should be adequately, logically organized, and it should be complete. And of course, uh, minimal to no errors. Uh, again, for the NELCs, um, these are the ones uh, that this performance task uh, addresses. Uh, it pretty much addresses uh, a lot of the items under hypothesis testing in grade 11. So that concludes my presentation about uh, two suggested performance tasks that make use of the SEP data. Now, if you want to use these performance tasks for your own classes, or maybe you want to modify it in some way to, to fit your students or their grade levels, you can access these um, performance tasks by logging in to the SEP website. Once you're logged in as a teacher, just click on Teaching Guides, and it will lead you to a page containing um, these tables. So you will see a table for grade school, junior high school, and senior high school. Uh, of course, the two performance tasks are under junior high school and senior high school. So as you can see here, there's a teacher version, which is uh, a more detailed uh, version of the performance task. And then there's a student version. So this is the one that you can actually distribute to your students. So you can give them the student version and it will contain the instructions, the scenario, and what they have to submit uh, for the activity. Okay. And first, uh, again, just to remind you to, sam to get uh, data uh, that you can use for these activities, all the students have to do is to log in using their student code into the SEP website. Uh, they go to the access data uh, function and they can download a random sample. This ends my presentation. Uh, once again, SEP can be accessed at mathplusresources.com. We welcome your feedback, inquiries, and suggestions. Please uh, email us at mathplusapps at gmail.com. So thank you very much. So let me now uh, call back Dr. Jumel Sarmento for the next part of our program. Thank you very much, Dr. Mark Tolentino. We are now in the question and answer portion of our webinar. May I call on the speakers to go on stage? Hello. Welcome uh, back. <laughs> so uh, I think we have time to answer a few questions. May we have the first question? Okay. So the first question is, uh, do you have ideas for integrative performance tasks? So I think it's for you, Dr. Mark Tolentino. Uh, yes, uh, yes uh, Dr. Abirin gave an answer earlier about uh, an idea for integ integrative performance tasks. Uh, for the statistic uh, performance task, for example, in the infographic, we could ask the students to write an accompanying article or an accompanying report. So that could be uh, a task that uh, will relate to their English or Filipino subject. Pwede Tagalog, your article or your report, or pwede in English. So that could be uh, an integrated performance task. Of course, with their arts class, you can also uh, integrate 
the, the art principles that they learn in designing their Indian graphics. So that could be a requirement also for their art class. Yes, thank you very much. For our next question, is it possible to do some of the tasks you have shown without the apps? Uh, maybe Dr. Debbie Versosa can answer the question. Uh, good morning. So, um, of course, you can use um, the tasks without the apps. For several years, we've thought even without the apps. So, Hanggang ngayon, um, even during the time of pandemic, of course, we can use what we've done before na wala pang apps. But now that you have the apps, as what all of us emphasize today, you have to explore the apps because kung napansin ninyo, in many of our presentations, the tasks are parang worksheets or assessment tools that are based on the app. So it's possible that only the teacher has the apps, but then the teacher, after exploring, you can design questions after learning something from the apps. Thank you very much, Dr. Versosa. The next question, uh, one of the challenges we, pay, we face is that parents or other members of the family work on tasks instead of the students. Can this be remedied using the apps? Uh, so who would like to answer the question? Dr. De Las Peñas, would you like to answer? Uh, uh, as you also have probably seen through our presentations, uh, when we ask the students to explore say, the scenarios, we give uh, the suggestions that they could explore the apps. So as uh, you make a problem uh, uh, very interesting for them and the use of the apps uh, in a game-like environment, that's... Uh, uh, quite um, easy for them to visualize the problem. This is a uh, one way to engage them, you know, so that they themselves will be able to take the initiative to do the task or the problem themselves. So in this sense, uh, we could uh, say that because you know that we are addressing now the the the, the new generation. You know, most of these people have the, our students have been born with technology present. So this is something very natural to them. So we hope that because uh, usually the students, naka, ano na yan sila, parati sila nakatutok sa YouTube, nakatutok yan sila sa Netflix or whatnot. So the use of technology is something that's second nature to them. And precisely we want uh, uh, them to enjoy studying mathematics. Mathematics is not as difficult and as challenging as uh, one would always seem, no? But when we make it very accessible and reachable to them in the way we present the problem, coupled with the apps, we can see that on their own, they, they would want to just do the exercises and the tasks themselves. And uh, hopefully, hindi na yung parents <laughs> or other members of the family we will do this for them. And they can discuss with their group mates, kunyare. So this is something na, oh, doing, that's why in one of the activities I suggested, uh, this is something, no, sa group work, sabay silang mag-share at mag-explore no app. And they can discuss among themselves. So that's another way that hopefully we could address this challenge. Thank you very much, Dr. De Las Peñas. Uh, Dr. Aberin, would you like to add something to the answer? Uh, but if uh, I'm thinking of uh, if parents or other members of the family are the ones answering it, as long as uh, the students are together, no? I mean, the, it, it could be a bonding experience for, for the family as well. Eh? Uh, I see nothing wrong about that. Uh, but as long as hindi lang solely parents or ang um, ate ko lang sumagawa, pero they will serve as guide for for the students, uh, that that would be good, no? Kasi at least engage, I mean, involve sila sa sa schooling ng mga bata. As long as uh, may significant input uh, and work yung bata, I see nothing wrong with parents getting involved with the with the learning of 
uh, and schooling uh, of the students. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm sorry we have we don't have so much time, so we'll end the question and answer portion. Uh, thank you very much to our teachers from Mandaluyong City, Marikina City, Quezon City, and uh, Paranaque, and also other teachers who are uh, tuning in with us on YouTube. Now, to formally end this webinar, we have our team leader, Dr. De Las Peñas, for the closing remarks. Thank you very much, Dr. Sarmiento. So once again, I would like to uh, thank all the teachers who have participated in this webinar. I'd like to thank uh, the STS, Dr. Romela Cruz. I'd also like to, to thank Dr. Aline Mendoza, uh, who gave the opening remarks earlier. And uh, for all the, the support and the cooperation as we uh, move forward uh, in the coming year for all the challenges that we will face uh, as we continue to devote our time and our efforts to help our students in, in learning uh, mathematics and in, in learning in general. So on behalf of Ateneo de Manila University, on behalf of our team, uh, we would uh, welcome all of your questions and suggestions um, the coming uh, next month. So if there is anything, uh, any assistance you would need with regards to the math plus resources and other aspects of uh, teaching and uh, uh, mathematics to our students, kindly email us, uh, visit our site. We will be uh, updating our apps uh, every now and then. Uh, in the next uh, uh, months, the coming year. So, uh, and if you have uh, further suggestions as well, we would welcome uh, this. So once again, um, thank you everyone. And to all our teachers, continue to enjoy uh, preparing your lessons, your assessment task, your performance task, and uh, stay safe and have uh, a pleasant uh, uh, month uh, and the months ahead. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. De Las Penas. Um, so again, thank you very much for staying with us. Uh, we will request you to, to fill up an evaluation form the link is flashed on screen.